Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to PCM 22 Career Mode. This is episode 104. We continue on with our journey with the Jiro to try to repeat a tour that we won against the very guy that we won it with. Kronz is here. He's the heavy favorite. He's the best place rider right now, but technically we have the second best place rider in terms of your regular GC kind of guys. But after a little chaos in our previous uh, episode... Plitrago finds himself in the leader's jersey as UAE didn't want anything to do with that leader's jersey. They didn't want to have to defend it, and so they allowed a breakaway to go really far out. So the last couple of stages, I've been putting guys in the breaks just in case. Guys that were on that edge and just behind, and Gonzalez was one of those guys today. And I'm, I'm done working. They had the kind of gap that looked like it had a chance today. They were uh, almost seven minutes ahead. And after the first climb, and shortly after that, the field put their foot down, chased him down, which is what always happens when I put a guy in the break. It was looking like the kind of day that could succeed, and then it wasn't. <laughs> uh, so Gonzalez is just going to sit up, and we're going to focus on these guys, as this is the decisive moment of the day, actually. 6K to go on this one, but 33K overall, and... Do I want to? Yeah, Gonzalez is going to get swept up here in just a moment, but let's try to divide this field a little bit as we do have enough of a race day. Race day condition bonus. Martinez only on a minus one, though. Really poor draw for him. He is a couple days from hitting his fitness peak, so he's coming up really soon on that one. All right, Bausch. We're going to go flat out with Bausch because he's not a puncher. And here comes Gonzalez. We're going to get Gonzalez at the back. Or, you know, don't call him in the group, even though he's clearly here. Come on, Dash. Really? He still can't make it through? Alright, on to Ponomar. Ponomar making his way through. Regary blocking him off, making life more difficult for us. And Ponomar's through. On to uh, McKellar. McKellar finally finds some space. So, Ponomar, let's get you out of the way. And McKellar continues to put the field under pressure. And this is where we finally have a puncher. Making it happen. 2.6k. Trying to split the field. Last two riders from the break. Piccioni has split off Garzon and Martinez. And you know what? Let's just keep going. This could be a stage win type scenario. Technically, we've got a front five sort of thing going here. Hell, all right. Put you in contact, but okay. Pagione looking strong. McKellar fading Garzone. Oh, and then he blocks Martinez. Come on, I got five guys and a descent. This could be this could be the moment. Gonzalez, you're you're gonna sit. Oh Martinez is out of energy. Jeez. Okay. Uh we're gonna keep going. Piccioni and Garzone can really gain something here. There's still one rider left to the break, by the way. How's your guy descending? Oh, he's good. That's going to be a difficult catch. Martinez needs to recover. Come back to the group. Gonzalez. Up the effort. You can protect Martinez. All right, they have a 23 second advantage. There's 23 riders behind. And we're about to get caught. We are caught. Chagai at the front sitting up now. And let's get these guys in order. Uh, Gonzalez. 37 in the group. Trigai is out of energy. 
Martinez recovering a little bit, which is what we need here. No point trying to do something that's not going to happen. But McKellar, let's go. Now that Martinez has a little bit of recovery. Come on, Martinez. Come on. Get in contact. That's your guy. Tick back end. These two guys need to go on auto. <clears throat> this is the front of the field. Okay. Start gelling for these guys. 99. 5K. McKellar can sprint. No one else can, so Gonzalez hit the front. Chagai. Hit second if you can. 2.6K. 2K. Gonzalez starting his sprint. Chagai leading out McKellar. And 1K to go. We'll ride with McKellar, who's got our best chance of getting a podium today. We're, he's not a sprinter, but he might get... Oh, he's going to miss third by just a little bit. Fredheim takes the win ahead of Grimai. How are those guys still here? Dang. Regeri, the first non-sprinter. We were second in non-sprinters. I don't know how you had two sprinters there at the finish line. It wasn't that hard of a stage, but it wasn't that easy of a stage. We had, fifth, we had 48 and 14... Probably not losing any contenders, but maybe, maybe. Remember, we've got around that top 15, we've got a bunch of guys who are not that strong. Individual time trial, and it's a tricky one because it's 40K. It's got a fair bit of undulation with a healthy climb at the beginning that's, you know, a good 10 kilometers long, and then a healthy descent, healthy flat area, and then plenty of undulation at the finish. To go along with it it's it's a tricky time trial to get right and i think some of it depends on the profile of the rider on where to go maybe a little bit harder versus where to ease off a little bit and save something for you know later potomar is definitely more balanced and so i, I kind of want to get a general sense of how much effort we can put in bausch bausch actually did pretty dang well uh, currently sitting in 21st, but he's three minutes down and just in 21st. So there are some pretty significant gaps out there. You can see Hul is overtaking Ponomar, but Ponomar is going to be able to give so much more in what's to come on the flat and hopefully make up some ground on this guy who has, for now, outclimbed him. Hul, only a 70. Oh gosh, 79 time trial. Man, oh man. Uh, I don't think we're going to catch him. <laughs> he does seem to be going uh, a bit easier on the descent than Ponomar is. Ponomar already having to pedal and, you know, not conserving as much energy as a result. So we might want to go a little easier on the descent because we certainly didn't gain much ground on him there. But you can see for now, even though he's a time trialist with a 79, we are outpacing him right now and actually still putting away a little something. So he put a lot more into the climb than we did. We were 301 down and we are exactly 301 down. And you can see he is now attacking the climb. So the climb seems to be an important place. As there goes Fully Bogana, the favorite. And we attack the line and yeah, 441 down as McKellar gets start. McKellar's. Uh, Already that tired? I think we've been attacking the climb a little bit too hard with these guys. Here's another fairly balanced one. So we'll try the different approach of pushing harder on the climb and see what this does compared to Ponomar, as McKellar and Ponomar are quite similar. 
Uh, meanwhile, Trigai is definitely a stronger climber, so we do absolutely want to try that approach with him. So McKellar going much, much deeper on the climb, putting a much bigger emph emphasis on a good time in here. When we go over the top, we're going to have to uh, back off quite a bit once we are tucked. And that is now. So down to a 63. Trigai still has a way to go on the climb. McKellar just a minute 35 behind. Gonzalez has already set off, so now we got to manage three guys. Not the easiest thing to do right now. Again, strength in the climb. I'm liking the 81 in terms of what that kind of set us up for. Keller definitely recovers a lot on that descent. I'll put him at a try a 69 from here on the flat. Your guy easing off for the climb. Ease off a little more. <laughs> Gonzalez still climbing. Yeah, he only loses four seconds by easing off. Getting hit about a 70 now. And Shagai has flattened out, so. Try the 70 now. Piccioni has started. I think the AI pushes a little too hard compared to what they could or should do. It's almost, almost to the top. McKellar is climbing once again. McKellar needs to push harder through here. And 1.4k. Trick guy still in a good spot. Gonzalez. Piccioni still climbing. And Martinez at an 80. Uh, zero race day condition for him. His expected is a plus one. He's one day maybe two from hitting his uh, fitness peak that close to hitting that plus four plus five territory 307 definitely you know a minute and a half better than uh potomar so it it did pay off chargai see if we can save a little bit for the uh, second climb and gonzalez is down on the flat down on the flat that's hurting his time We let that go a little too long there. And Piccioni's about to go over the top. Here's Garzone. Garzone's got a plus three. He's started his fitness peak. Oh, he lost a lot of pace, though. I slowed him down too much. That's Yates, though. Yates is strong. On the flat. Gonzalez has a lot of spare energy here. 75. Piccioni. Oh, most of the way down the descent and didn't save a lot of energy. Still climbing. Okay. Tragai 507 down. So we did not manage that one well, but he's also a terrible time trialist. So Gonzalez climbing. This is push hard territory. Make up some time. Piccioni on the flat. Yeah. And Martinez is about to start descending. And he tucks. Garzone still climbing. Martinez, minute 46 down at the first time check. Piccioni, just a minute one for him after the second time check. Good position there. Minute 52 for Gonzalez. About to crest here. He's got that little bit left for the end. Right, give me a little recovery. Give me a little recovery. Oh, too hard, too hard. Fortieth, two fifty-eight. Ouch! Lost a lot in that final stretch because we had gone too deep and had to really back off. Piccioni, not going to quite do what he's got to do either here at the end. And Martinez, oh crap. 
Mm. Trying to manage five guys at once. Martinez is going to have the Gonzalez problem. He's going to lose a bunch of time here. I never even eased off for Garzon. He's already out of energy. He's got an insanely good... He doesn't have an insanely good time. He's at a minute 32. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. 2.37 for Piccioni. That is our best time. Piccioni may be the leader. He may be into that leader's role now. Martinez. Getting some recovery. Getting some recovery. And beginning the final climb. Three twenty seven down. Damn. Four oh three for Garzon. Damn. Man. Okay. That was a tough I told you that was a tough time trial. And the hardest thing was trying to manage five guys at at the same time. Uh at times we had them in the right way, but that's one reason why I like keeping it balanced. Keeping it balanced makes can make a big difference, but we, we saw with Ponomar versus McKellar, balanced was a 441 down. Making the right effort at the right time with the one guy where we could clearly do that effectively and not be troubled with others. McKellar was 307 down. Gonzalez, 258 though. Piccioni, 237. Competitive times. Fleet Ogana was on top. Arnsman, McNulty. Oh man, that's going to be a dangerous one. Uh, he put in an amazing time. He had to have had a plus five. He's not that good of a time trialist. Kronz was 10th at 44 seconds down. And I miss him. <laughs> but Trago still leads. Kronz is now third. McNulty is fifth. Vlasov is seventh. And we are gone from the top 10 entirely. We got our work cut out for us for this, Jiro. Just to even get a top 10, let alone top five or a podium. It is not pretty, folks. It is not pretty at all. 10-12 for Martinez, 10-16 for Garzone, and 10-39 for Piccioni in 18th through 21st. But we are far enough down positionally and time that we can stage hunt with all three of these guys rotating. And one day, presumably, somebody is going to gain a bunch of time back. It's been a while since I've had a stretch that uh, in a Grand Tour that went so poorly. It's been a long while. Martinez finally has started his fitness peak. Piccioni is on his fitness peak. They are 18th and 21st. Garzon just ended his fitness peak. And then in 29th, just a few minutes behind those guys, is Gonzalez. He's going to start his fitness peak no, his fitness peak is going to end any day. He, those were the two that were on their fitness peak. I now have three guys that have just started their fitness peak. Bausch will not get it in time. Ponomar will not get it in time. Uh, and McKellar also just ended. So with that, here's the plan. Martinez, Piccioni, co-leaders for the remainder of this race stage 14 of 21 we've got four five mountain stages and a mountain time trial remaining but we are too far down so riding normal riding gc will do absolutely nothing i have two very strong guys that are done with their fitness peaks though i'm going to Take one of these two guys alternating stages so one of them's going to do it on 14 whoever's got the best race day condition is going to go attack i am going to t take someone ponomar mckellar gonzalez garzone chergai uh maybe wait, who's the other uh, maybe not mckellar not bausch not mckellar but any of the other riders and try to get them in the break with them to do all the work and then depending on how far away they are we either drop back into the peloton 
and try to ride for safety and, and not lose time. Or if they get a big enough gap, then we ride for the stage and we pull, we claw back four minutes, five minutes, and get back in the top ten. We're ten minutes down. It's ugly. It's, it's been really ugly after a you know brilliant start in that team time trial, best we've ever had. Things have not gone well since then. Time trial, doing it my traditional way might have worked out better, but we still would have lost a big chunk of time. It worked out well for a couple guys. It didn't work out well for a few guys. It was too much, too many riders, too many variables to manage properly. And I got it right for a few, but I definitely made some errors with some key guys. Now, could I have focused entirely just on those few guys? Well, I had four guys in position that we were trying to manage, and all four were out there at the same time. So that it was a difficult ask. Could I, should I have focused just on Martinez and Piccioni? Knowing where we were headed fitness peak wise? Probably. Probably. Uh, because Garzon and Gonzalez weren't, weren't going to matter as much. And I, I knew that ahead of time. So I could have consciously made that decision. But when have I ever had a time trial go poorly? It's happened. It has happened. But this is one of my strengths. And I got a better time for a few guys than they would have gotten from the way I normally handle. But I got a worse time for the others. And so the trade-off. So was it worth it? On balance, I'd say no. On what could have been. But Martinez didn't have a positive race day condition. Piccioni did. But Piccioni also had terrible time trial rating. So realistically, I should have focused just on Martinez because I knew he was our leader. He's our best climber. I just ignored everybody else. Let them do their own thing. And their times would have been much worse. But Martinez would have had a better time. How much higher would he be, though? Probably 14th, 15th. I mean, it wouldn't have made that much of a difference. We would still be in a tricky spot. He would have been nine minutes down instead of 10. I think I'm kind of talking semantics here, talking myself in circles of how much of a difference, how much better would he be off? I don't think much. Not much. And we certainly wouldn't have been better off with anybody else. So here's the thing. Motivation's there. Morale's there. We have some support riders. But I'm going to take those two guys. And we're going to alternate trying to gain something from the break. Because it's inevitable in the final stages that breakaways can and will, but not always, take big chunks of time. And we're far enough down that that could be the case. Knowing the AI, the breakaway is never going to see the light of day again. The Krantz is going to win five stages the rest of the way. Why? Because that's, that's how the AI is. When they're the ones away in the break, they couldn't care less. They care when you're in the break. Even if I was putting Bausch in the break, they care when it's Bausch in the break just as much as I care if it's Martinez or Piccioni. Can I get them in the break from the position we're in? I should be able to. Won't be easy. It's going to take effort. It's going to take time. It seems so easy when they try to attack. But you know what? That, that's bias because there are times where it's easy for me. There's times where it's easy for them. There's times where it's difficult. You notice the difficult ones when it's you because it's difficult and it's you. I, I think the game on balance is fairly balanced, but it is true that the AI is more aggressive towards you on this difficulty level, and that's confirmed. And the AI is more aggressive in general for the last two years. They changed the coding to make the AI more aggressive, and they are, and it's a good thing. We just have our hands full on if we're going to get back in this race at all. It's possible. Just last La Vuelta, Buitrago ended up on the podium after being, 
I'm like 20th and I'm totally out of it because he went in the break, break every day and ultimately it worked out for him. We need to guard against losing time as much as we can. We've got to get on the front foot with those two guys and see one of them gain a big chunk of time. Whichever one it ends up being, when that happens, that becomes the leader. For now, co-leaders trying to get back in the race. It's something different. It's interesting. Hopefully we can uh, do something with that. Hopefully the AI actually, you know, lets one of these groups get up the road. I'm Cathlon Gamer. That's going to do it for this episode. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.